Welcome back. It's still the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Glad to see we have joining us now our guest as we analyze the headlines on the front pages of today's National Daily's Chartered Arbitrator. Um, Chris Candy Wando is joining us via Zoom from somewhere in Lagos. Uh, Chris, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Kofi. And I hope you have planned your movement today because I, of the most of all <laughs> of all rally that is only in Lagos. I was I was about to ask you the same too because I wouldn't want you to get stuck for someone as busy as you are. You know, well, yeah, I've planned my movement. We have the mother of all rallies in Lagos today, indeed. Um, everybody, this should be the biggest rally in the history of Lagos State. So, I mean, we're expecting some traffic uh, um, interruptions. But indeed, the authorities in Lagos have put out traffic advisory. So it'll be easy, you know, for uh, for us to move around. That's why Lagos is center of excellence, you know. Yes. Yes, we are. Yeah, a good, so, a good, a good name budget. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I hope you remember that on Saturday. <laughs> Let's go. Yes, yes. <laughs> Let's go to the first paper. This morning, the punch uh, has some very interesting, uh, interesting headlines. This one says a big one there. Excuse me. Latest poll puts Tinubu ahead of all. Latest poll puts Tinubu ahead of all. And their details on page eight of the punch newspaper. Another one: four days to polls, naira chaos grounds economy. Four days to polls, Naira chaos grounds economy. Banks ration 200 Naira notes. Nigerians lament hardship. Uh, protesters raise two Ogun banks. Vandalize LG office. Oh, my. Um, more from the paper. Uh, okay, I think we'll leave the one at the bottom. Petrol rose by 55% to 257 Naira per liter in January. NBS. That's Nigeria statistics. Uh, with a picture, rightly so of uh, Timmy Perez Silva, Minister of State for uh, Petroleum Resources. All right, um, but that, that first headline, the one on, on top there is an advertorial, okay, means that uh, someone paid, paid for it. So you might want to bear that in mind while reading that particular story. All right, let's move on to the leadership. Interesting stories on the front page, or headlines on the front page of leadership. The big one there, 2023 polls, security agencies dispel postponement Rumor, uh, we're already set for Saturday's election, says CDS, as the Chief of Defense Staff. Uh, Commonwealth observers task INEC candidates on credible elections. Will that work? Uh, only Nigerians can determine their leaders. Uh, quite interesting. There's a picture on the front page there of former South African President uh, Thabo Mbeki. He's the leader of the Commonwealth delegation. Uh, of observers to the election. Uh, he is with the chairman of INEC, Mahmoud Yakubo, during uh, the Commonwealth observers' visit to INEC in Abuja yesterday. Uh, looking good, quite looking quite good, Thabo Mbeki. Um, indeed, the path to Nigeria's door has been beaten by a lot of observers, members of the international community, media, international media uh, organizations are all here for the 2023 elections. More from the leadership. Uh, Tinubu leads in closing poll as Obi Atiku Trail. I don't know if this is a, um, an advertorial. Look at details when we, when we get to that point. 2023, how candidates may perform, may perform in states. Again, four policemen, three gunmen killed in Anambra. This is the same Anambra where you had attacks on a police station uh, over the weekend. Atiku Tinubu bicker over APC governor's insistence on old Naira notes, uh, alleged three billion Naira fraud. Governor Yahya Bellows, a nephew, three others get five hundred million Naira bill each. Interesting way the paper puts it. Uh, and final one from the leadership: our endorsement of Peter Obi Sacrosanct. Okay, Pandef, uh, another group that has endorsed Obi, of course, the Star Alliance, including the ADC, um, African Democratic Congress. All right, so let's move over to the next paper. We have two more to go. The Daily Independent has an interesting picture on its front page. You can see uh, President Buhari uh, right there at the uh, Namdi Azikiwe International Airport uh, on his return. I think he went to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia for the 36th African Union Summit. 
uh, you can see Professor Ibrahim Gambari, who is the Chief of Staff um, to the President, right there. Uh, Mohamed Bello, Minister of the FCT, and you have uh, Usman Al Kalibaba, who is the IG of P. Uh, that's the Inspector General of Police. And a very, very interesting salute. Sean, sir, is what the policemen normally say. All right, the big headline on that front page. Uh, protesters set two banks ablaze in Ogun over Naira scarcity, invade local government secretariat, cut away maize. These are uh, bank customers, or uh, Chris Kato will tell us if he believes so. Uh, 2023 election, endorsement of Peter B is sacrosanct, Pandev. PSC uh, replaces Najatu as Northwest Police Coordinator after APC protest as a police service commission. Court stops INEC from engaging MC Luomo for election materials distribution. Uh, uh, why now? Uh, election security. We are good to go, Defense Chief. Malami meets Adamu Bagudu, El Rufai, others over Naira swap policy. Uh, DPO, six others killed in fresh gunmen attack on Onicha police station. Alleged uh, 3 billion Naira fraud. Court dismisses EFCC's counter affidavit grants Ali Bello, three others, 500 million Naira bail. Um, 2023 presidential election, Tinubu leads in closing poll. I wonder if that is also an editorial. Um, this is on the headlines on the front page of Daily Penner. Quite interesting uh, edition of the paper, you might add. The final one, the Nation newspaper. Some interesting headlines as well. Naira, customers overwhelm banks with cash demands. Customers overwhelm banks with cash with cash demands. So riders to that one thirty held after arson on four branches. Malami in talks with APC leaders. Um, all right, amalgamation of Fulani groups endorsed Tinubu uh, pipeline uh, vandalism, oil theft hurting economy. Buhari meets Ethiopian Airlines over Nigeria Air. Are we still there? Uh, Southwest leaders back Tinubu. Command APC on power shift. And Poe tips Tinubu to win. Um, Chris, let's start with that particular story of a Poe uh, tipping Tinubu to win. Uh, what the nation newspaper says is going by the poll conducted by Fredan Services. Fredan Services, uh, all progressive Congress presidential candidate, uh, Shiwaji Bola Tinubu is projected to win Saturday's presidential election. The result of the opinion survey conducted in all 36 states of the Federation and in the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, rated the APC standard bearer ahead of other contenders. They say four key variables, political geography, religion, uh, resources, and class were used by a team of data analysts during the eight-week survey. Um, those filtered along, Tinubu R, the paper says, Atiku Abuokar of PDP, Peter B of Labour Party and Rabi Okwankwasi of the NNPP. The paper says out of the 287,033 that responded uh, to the 370,000 questionnaires distributed, 106,000, that is 37.2% of them projected Tinubu ahead of others. He was trailed by Peter B of the Labour Party. Um, Chris, we've had a number of polls, including the NOI polls, ANAP polls and all that, that have consistently put uh, the Labour Party presidential candidate ahead. Uh, what do you think about this new one um, that's putting the APC uh, presidential candidate ahead? Uh, what do you think may have happened to sway the minds of most Nigerians in, in his direction in just the uh, past few days? Kofi, if you believe this, you believe anything. I don't believe it. So it doesn't make any difference to me. Even the ones that I've had in the, we've had in the past, I don't believe. All those are just conjectures by some people who decided to just sit down and talk because I probably get paid for doing what they did. The, the, the punch of the power captured it effectively by placing a banner that it was an advertorial, which means that all the stories that we are reading are sponsored by some individuals that are to the presidential candidate of the uh, of APC. Don't be surprised if tomorrow we open up the head there, uh, Mr. Pass again, you see that uh, another one saying that uh, uh, Atiku Abubaka is dead. I read one last yesterday or so, uh, where it was also stated that Atiku Abubaka 
this time of politics and politicians can do anything. Uh, it just have barely three days. Like look at the clock uh, sticking on your on your screen. You have barely about three, four days to finish. Let's just wait and see what happens. Even in um, advanced countries where there have been protections and likes, we came to realize that at times that it was also wrong. Remember what happened between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump during the presidential election, where Hillary Clinton was uh, tipped to win that election only for the election to come and uh, uh, answer that, like um, Donald Trump won that election. So it's the Nigerians people that decide, not just people that sit down in their sitting room or somewhere, one room, and then uh, try to conduct pictures and uh, tell us that this is going to be. There's going to be a lot at stake this time around. This is not 2015, this is not 2019. A lot of things will be at stake. And a lot of undecided voters are going to determine this election. Young Nigerians are going to determine the election. The women also are going to be a determinant. Then uh, the rest of us, don't forget that we have over nine, about 94 million Nigerians that have been certified to vote at the election. What I just uh, that Nigerians will do part of their numbers and then come out and put like what we had in the past, where we have this high number of uh, voters. But at the end of it, all, you come to realize that we barely have up to 45 percent to go to 50 percent Nigerian voting population. Yeah. And we see that look at the figures and President uh, Muhammad Buhari won the election under, I think, under 20 million uh, the last time. To add that of article, which is about 11 million, we just realized that we have barely up to 50 million people voting, which is just about 50 percent. So, but Nigerians must come out and exercise their franchise on the, on Saturday. That is where what matters to. All right, thank you, uh, uh, Chris. Let's look at um, another one, um, uh, the big one there on the front page of um, Daily Independent. We had a, a bit of a look at that uh, in our, our top trending segment. Uh, We've seen attacks on banks continue, uh, you know, by people who are said to be angry that they can't find Naira. And, um, you, you know, ATM machines are destroyed, you know, they smash the bank windows and all that. Staff have to escape by, jump, by jumping the fence. The latest one in Ogun State, uh, in Shagam, you have, uh, apart from setting two banks on fire in Ogun State over the Naira scarcity, the protesters also attacked uh, local government secured, invaded the local government secured, and cutted the maze away. Um, I, I said something when we had a, a, a top training segment. I said something I've been initiated that uh, these people, some people feel they are sponsored by politicians. And so, to you, are these are these guys um, genuine? You know what you're seeing. These are these people attacking banks and throwing stones, you know, and, and burning them and all that. Are they are they genuine? Do they have genuine reasons? Or are, do you follow? Do you agree with those who say there they may be someone else playing the drums for the dance that they are dancing? I totally agree with you. These are not genuine uh, agitators. If you have money in a bank, you will go to the bank and destroy the bank. If you do that, you can bring back your money. The fact remains that these are people that are good loans, uh, probably politically motivated by a certain class who are ready to cause mayhem. And probably truncate the election coming up on Saturday and the one of March 11. This is no longer uh, agitation. Uh, there are better ways of agitating. Uh, when you go to bank, go to bank, look at vote, uh, destroy uh, their properties, go to local government. Do you? Do you let me ask you, Kofi. Do the local government issue money? That is what you ask yourself. Do they issue money? Do they? Do they distribute to 2,000 naira at local? Government? They went, so with, they went with the maze of, of the local government. Uh, hey, hey, now, somebody wants to use it for firewood. <laughs> somebody wants to use it for firewood. <laughs> probably doesn't have a firewood. But I, on a most serious note, one of my friends, a classmate of mine, uh, yesterday was really, really bitter when he spoke with me. He was um, the general manager southwest of one of the banks that was former general manager of southwest of one of the banks. Okay. And he was complaining bitterly to me that one of the banks that was born totally burnt without a pin coming out of it. He said, when he was a general manager of Southwest of that bank, he built that bank, and it has been burnt. He also spoke of another one that was burnt in Abeokut, I think the Shark Bomb, or wherever area in the state. 
that this is a colossal loss uh, to the banks. And you, you come to realize, I ask myself, what's the place of uh, police intelligence? What's the place of police? If the police in this state, like Oku State and the rest of them, were not be able to get the necessary intel that the people are going to attack, practically over five or six months were attacked uh, and destroyed in Shagam alone yesterday along the Akarigu um, road or way in Shagam. All the banks there were destroyed. And I asked myself, where were security against? They said they, uh, they, said they arrested 27 people last But if you are able to preempt this and make sure that all these banks, this, uh, these banks are volatile and um, areas that are prone to uh, attacks, I would expect that security agency would have lies and make sure that they're secure. But as I said earlier on, this goes just beyond agitation and protest. This is politically motivated by individuals who are taking, trying to take advantage of the situation on ground to loot and also to destroy the parties. And I hope those behind it. Interesting. All right, let's look at uh, some more stories um, uh, coming from uh, the the papers. Um, the the security situation, of course, the defense chief is saying that he is good to go. Um, we have that taken from the front page of the Daily Independent. And a couple of other papers are also mirroring that uh, the security chief saying that uh, he is good to go. In fact, it is a CDS, as quoted in one particular uh, paper, the chief of defense staff. Um, are, you, are you concerned about you know, the ability of the security operatives and agencies in the country to, um, to, 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 to ensure public safety and order? ahead of the election and to help us have a free and fair election on Saturday? I'm not afraid. I, I, I know that we have the capacity in terms of security to be able to handle a situation like this. Um, this is not the first time we've had the election since 1999 um, to date, and the security agencies are up, up and doing. And um, the INA through the electoral act has also made things much more easier for people to go and vote. The introduction of the beavers um, is going to help a lot. So the issue of snatching of ballot boxes, which has been prevalent in the past, is a thing of the past. So uh, that in itself will reduce some level of tension within the polling booth. The security agencies, not just the police, um, the army being mobilized, and uh, the civil defense and other security agencies have been, um, been uh, uh, mobilize, be able to give adequate protection to all the electorates and those that are going to participate in the election. Um, so I have no doubt that uh, they'll be able to get this done. But my own worry is the recent attack on police uh, facilities and stations, especially in the, in the southeast, um, which uh, especially again in Anambra State. In the past uh, four to five days, we've seen a series of attacks on police stations in Anambra State, and several policemen have been killed by so called unknown or unknown men or unknown them. And I hope that uh, this will be to be as quickly as possible to move towards the election. So, obvious that certainly that don't want election to go in, this, in that part of the country. And uh, so much uh, eyebrow has been raised and uh, concern has been raised about the security situation in the southeast prior to this election. And I hope that this will be sorted out. The same thing goes to the north, uh, northeast and also north central, where we've seen the issue of banditry, kidnapping, killings, um, that is going on. I don't think I said there's anything that wants to be put in here. It's a free and fair election that all everybody will be able to make, even those of international. So I hope that the security agencies are already strategize effectively to make sure that every part of this country is very secure for Nigerians to do part and make their address Saturday. Oh. Right. We'll stay with the election stories and uh, we'll go back to the Daily Independent. Uh, look at this particular headline on the front page of um, the Daily Independent. Uh, quite interesting. It's also carried by a number of other papers. Uh, 2023 election endorsement of Peter Obi is sacrosanct. Pandev. This is the Pan Niger Delta Forum, uh, the Pan Niger Delta Forum of Edwin Clark. And what the paper says is that um, the Pan Niger Delta Forum has affirmed that the endorsement of Peter Obi, uh, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, by the forum is sacrosanct and urged the public to disregard 
the reported rejection of Obi's endorsement by so-called Youth of the Forum. Uh, you know, the press statement by Ken Robinson, the National Publicity Secretary of Pandev, noted that this is what the paper says. The report is born out of infantile musings, pointing out that in the first place, Pandev doesn't have wings and stressed that the forum maintains a consolidated framework at the national, state, uh, and uh, uh, local government levels. So, so um, you know, I was saying something to someone yesterday at a forum where I was that um, one of the reasons why maybe Atik Abuka may have made a U-turn regarding his, uh, his uh, view or his position on Naira policy um, was um, a certain Arewa youth group that made some noise last week saying that uh, he's an enemy of the masses. You know, and you know, Atiku has this uh, thing. He always wants to be seen as pro Arewa. So, so, but, but one thing I said, I asked people yesterday was, you know, all these groups, you know, youth wing and all that. Maybe if the politicians can't get the main group to do their bidding, they would look for some youth group or some state wing. You know, something that someone will just start and it's okay, take this and just <laughs> say something for us. So, um, um, what do you say about this? Because Pandev is saying, see, we don't know this youth group or youth wing people are talking about. We have made our position known. And we're not shifting, we're supporting and throwing away and endorsing Peter Obi, it's Pan Niger Delta Forum. Um, what do you say to that? I have a second question for you, but what do you say to that? Well, the question you have to ask yourself, all the endorsement they've done, all these people have done in the past, to what effect has it been? Has it moved people from voting? What when they talk of block, what block are we talking about? <laughs> so to me, it's just uh, they are just trying to seek relevance and self uh, Entitlement that is what you are, you are pandered, say you are pandered, but they are representing the south, where the south is, and the, the south and north central. I'm from the south, but does your decision affect me? It doesn't affect me and how I'm going to vote. So when they are saying they are representing, who are they representing? Is uh, I think that it's just as I said, it's separate. But just as uh, the pandered said, they are doing uh, which of me is okay. You can also see that also already one of the people that uh, one particular group from Pulani said they are endorsing to group that in a friendly period they say they are endorsing to a person and also all manner of endorsing. I don't think, I think the, is the politicians are just trying to find a way of swelling uh, people's opinions and the rest of them. Um, Nigerians, no single person will come out, so-called so leader that come out. We are very, very educated. We are dynamic in our, in our thinking as Nigerians. Nobody can tell, even myself, it would be even difficult for me to even tell my wife, this is where to vote. In as much as I just said that, you know, okay, vote for this candidate. But it is our choice. When she gets to the poll that day, I'm not going there to with her. She will decide somebody, she, whoever she wants to vote for, she will vote for it. So anybody saying, uh, we can do so, so person, uh, that is how we are going to vote. It does not go beyond their personal, personal, they all have one, one vote each. So, the, the presidential candidates should continue to swear the masses across board, irrespective of wherever they are. Wherever they think that they can get the votes, they should go for them and they make sure that they convince them to But all these unnecessary things. Let me also tell you, I could be that most of these endorsements come with huge pockets. Most of these people collect money from so called political parties and politicians and telling them they are going to endorse them. Don't just think that some of these things go for free. They are not. Uh, more patriotic and patriotic than you and I. That is the true situation. Most of these people, um, it's for their pockets and the, the line with their line. It's not just because they believe in, in, on an individual. Most of them are not principled. You'd be shocked that when you see them outside beyond where they're making that um, statement, then you, you'll be shocked by what they'll be saying. But now also, from what we're hearing, they're divided down the line. If the youth wing, which I'm sure constitutes the majority of those uh, <laughs> that organization says, this is where they are going to go. Is there anybody, this so-called elders, but they, most they, of them they are say, they, they, Pandem is saying they don't have a youth wing. That's the same yeah, thing they, they say. That. So are you telling me the Pandem is only made of 80-year-old 80, 80 people like uh, by Edwin Clark? Are no, you, is no, that what you're telling no, me? No, he's saying that on, on, no, on, paper, on paper, like they, they, they formed a group called Pandem, that they don't mm -hmm. have a youth, they have not formed a youth wing. Let me tell as I said, Kofi, Take my words for it. It's like saying that Fanny Ferry has no youth. Are you telling me that the only people that are part of are people from 70 to 80 years? No, no. That's just because uh, uh, acting. Uh, but I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that I, the, the youth, there's, no, there's a youth wing. I'm not just saying that. What I'm saying in essence is that it would be difficult for anybody to tell me that you have an organization just made of old men that call themselves leaders 
of that particular organization, and that is where it ends. It's not possible. Um, but I don't know, even with the Ohanese and Dibu, you know that Ohanese, they also have their own youth groups. Ohanese, Apparently, yeah. they should have theirs, and so many other organizations along that line. But as I said, whether you win or not, you win. Each and every Chris, of these organizations Chris, have their own I personal can, I, can, I can give you, I can give you, I can, I can put up my WhatsApp so we can look at the messages that I received from time to time from the spokesman of Ohanese in the Igbo. You know, several times he has had to come out to to debunk press statement by people who say they are speaking on, on behalf of Ohanese in the Igbo. Several times. And um, you can even leave the uh, Ohanese in the Igbo worldwide to go to the state chapters. You know, some of them, sometimes I can give an example of a state I was in, River State. You know, we heard a, a, a faction or a group of some people come out and say, oh, Anese is endorsing a, a group, maybe Governor Wiki for this, that, that, or saying something about. And then I'll get calls from the, uh, the, the, the leadership of the group in the state, say, hey, no, we never, we never said that. It's a faction. We know who they are. You know? So, so, so if these groups are set up, they have their official recognized structures. You know, I remember there was once recently um, uh, a particular youth wing came out to say something that was opposite to what Ohanese in Igbo said. Now, these are leaders of thought, leaders of opinion, you know, who are entrusted in, you know, with, with, with them, who are seen, held in high esteem as people who speak for, for maybe a, an ethnic nationality, for instance. And um, someone just sits down somewhere and says, we will start a youth wing to counter what you're saying, so that a politician pays mm -hmm. us. This is what they're saying. They, they don't know this group. They don't know them. Kofi, specific Ohanese. Ohanese has that I know. I know the officers. They are well recognized. Um, they, 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 they had election. They were recognized. And they were sworn in by the late uh, Professor Obioza, who was the former, um, the late president of Ohanese. So if I'm talking, let me talk specifically of Ohanese now. Ohanese have a I know their policy secretary. No, but, but, but Chris, Ohanese, they have, so, they have yeah, factions, yeah, don't they? Ohanese, they have I'm factions. not talking about Ohanese for whichever one. I'm, I'm being specific on Ohanese now. Ohanese in the world has a youth wing, which is functioning, which is uh, also, but it is under the Ohanese uh, in, in the general worldwide that they have a youth wing. That I know of. That is a fact. I will give you one that. Um uh, uh, Chief Alex Obonia said to me, I don't know which, let me see if I can find. Uh, there are several. This one, it says, ignore it at home order. Another one, he, you know, several ones, uh, rejecting someone, some, so, something some group said, that they are not the ones who, who said, I don't have time to go um, into that. But, but another endorsement story. This wasn't carried by the, uh, the papers this point, but I think you would love to say something about this. Uh, and, you know, you talked about the fact that these uh, socio-political organizations, uh, sometimes the socio-cultural groups, rather, you know, when they, they embark on endorsements, it doesn't affect the choice of the common man who comes from their area. Um, so you tell me if you think this will have any impact. Uh, Ralph Nwosu, uh, who is the chairman of, of the embattled African Democratic Congress, uh, 18 hours ago put out a tweet saying, ADC endorses Obidati for president slash VP, uh, forms star alliance with political parties, civil societies, uh, organization, ethnic nationalities, professional groups, etc. market leaders to work for victory. Today is Peter Obi and Dati Baba Um So ADC has said, we don't have a presidential candidate. Um, we are going to support Peter Obi. That's the first party, I think. Will this have any effect? You use the word embattled. That means that use the word embattled, that means there may be other part. I don't know who the leader of it is. So I, I cannot be able to tell. But don't forget about five days ago, um, about four days ago, there was a press statement that issued that five political parties have endorsed um, Atikwa Baka. One of those political parties also came out. Maybe it's the ADC, I don't know which one. to say, no, we are not part of that endorsement. Kofi, as I said, this is the period of chopping. Uh, as we say in local parlance, politicians are bearing themselves. Most of the political parties don't have a single uh, candidate to fight for election. They just answer political parties for the fun of it. Um, what they do is use the opportunity to trade, uh, to trade certain uh, stuff with uh, major political parties and uh, candidates so that they can get some crumbs from them. They don't have the capacity or the willingness to be able to get involved. 
with the election, and every four years they come together. The next year, they say we are endorsing social press, we are endorsing social press. Ask me, I don't know how many um, House of Class, State House of Class, that the DC have. I don't know how many House of Representatives they have at uh, the National Assembly as well, or even the local government and the rest of them. So anybody can endorse anybody. Uh, but the fact is that what will this, what, what will this impact on the, uh, on the election? The political, major political parties know where their votes come from and they know who are going to give them their votes. So, which is why you see them on daily basis going around canvassing for vote. The PDP, APC, Labour Party, and to some uh, extent, NMP. Those are the major front runners. Any other political parties, I just, I just look at them as outsiders. And then they have the right to endorse anybody they want. But the question is, what are they bringing to the table? So, uh, how so, many people so, so, could they look up for task? And, yeah, uh, very good um, question. Very good question you've asked, um, Chris. Uh, for the ADC, um, which was is amongst the top one top parties in the country after PDP and, and uh, APC before Labour Party became uh, what they are today, they, they have um, a number of um, polling unit agents. Uh, about we, we hear they have a uh, two hundred thirty thousand nine hundred seventeen. Uh, polling agents. Yeah, everyone can have polling agents. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, having polling agents, every political party would have polling agents, no matter how small it is. They would de definitely have polling agents because even if they're not contested for presidency, they're not contested for governorship, they might decide to go for House of Assembly. They might decide to go for House, uh, house of Representatives. And most of these smaller parties, it is more of an individual rather than the political parties. Most of the big candidates, I've seen what is that you see what is happening. Um, we had a debate uh, sometime a, a, a bit, about two weeks ago on civil television. I was part of the campus, and I saw some political parties. We are there, we are that debate, and I was surprised how intelligent some of them. Most of them have never heard of their name. To them, very, very articulate young, young Nigerians, the way they are. I, 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 they were putting across their point and agenda. And I said, where have, have these guys been? I asked one of them, why come, how come we don't have it? They said, we don't have the opportunity. We don't have the work with that to go to the media. And I said, are you saying that media, media are collecting money or whatever? You can express yourself, but we walk into any television station. If you walk into Plus TV, I know Plus TV. I told him, I said, if you go to Plus TV, for goodness sake, they will give you opportunity. Plus, and it's a fact. Okay, I'm not just trying to uh, curry you guys. I know what you guys do. You walk into there. Once you have an idea, and you say this is what they have, they will give you opportunity. So don't just say that oh, we are not being given that. If the bigger ones are not giving you opportunity, and you think that, then go. There are so many millions that you can go, go to radio station. Lagos will have over twenty to twenty-five radio stations in Lagos, if not up to thirty. Walk into any of the radio stations. The NBC has given the various broadcast organizations the leverage to be able to treat all political um, uh, uh, candidates equally and be given opportunity to express themselves. That is part of our social responsibilities as a media person and such opportunity. So I don't use that as an excuse, but that is an individual. But the party doesn't seem to be, you understand what I'm saying? So I don't have any problem with that. As I said, the question to ask is that, what will this endorsement bring to the table? All right. I'm here to see. Uh, Chris, thank you very much. You will still need, I'll need to fact check that uh, information I have about, about the number of um, polling unit agents that ADC has. So I withdraw that. You know, but um, uh, well, well, yes, yes, yes. We have to keep people. Right I know there's, okay, there's a publication today. One of the papers we had stated all the polling. I think PDP has the highest, about one hundred seventy-six thousand something um, polling agents or whatever, um, followed by APC. And uh, I don't know what I thought is. I think the is thought. I don't know the other ones. But there's a public we can fact check, fact, fact check that it was published today. One of the papers you see the. The, the, but but we, we can say the more uh, polling agents you have, the merrier. Uh, Chris, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Judgment Day is just around the corner. Uh, three days and 15 hours to go. Uh, but we look forward to having you next week right here on The Breakfast. Thank you very much. And uh, quickly, another good news is the one by the court yesterday. Um, it's stopping uh, uh, MC Ulu almost. Uh, we didn't have time from, to do it. Uh, yes. uh, in charge of of electron materials in Lagos. That's a very good one. All right. Have a wonderful Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, Chris K. Nwando is a chartered arbitrator, UK certified uh, chartered arbitrator. We'll be right back. When we come back, we'll look at um, the push by the APC Governors and National Working Committee 
uh, for President Buhari and indeed Attorney General Abubakar Malami to allow Nigerians to spend the old Naira till after the elections. Why are they asking for that? We'll be right back. <laughs>